So this big pile of wood that I scabbed for my grandparents' place has been sitting on my bench for a month. I needed to turn these bed slats and an old wine rack into an effective storage solution so I could actually get some work done around here. Looking around my tiny workshop, it became obvious pretty quickly the only place this would fit is above my beloved red bike. After spending a few hours doing some incredibly detailed plans for my fake mortise and tenor and saddle joinery, I decided to do this primarily on my new dodgy table saw, which I have added a splitter and this lovely crosscut sled to, which is highly accurate-ish. Just docking off the ends. Obviously this was going to be a very, very rough workshop project, but I wanted to practice table saw skills. I've not had a table saw before this month, and this is obviously going to be my first time really using it. Here on the sled, you can see me measuring out and cutting down to about 30 centimeter lengths, the old bed slats. And I would encourage you that if you see something I'm doing that's incredibly dodgy or unsafe and I'm unaware of, please leave a comment below as how I can improve. It's the only way I'm going to learn. And I can only learn so much from watching other people do it on YouTube. There are all my pieces cross cut. And now we're installing the rip fence so that I can begin the process of cheating these joints. The way I'm going to do it is by getting the blocks and instead of trying to cut a 45 degree mortise, I'm going to trim off the edges here and that will allow me access to the center of the piece of wood. I can cut that on a 45 degree angle later on and then re-glue it and screw it back together. You'll see, it'll make sense as we come together. The rip fence is actually relatively accurate and the new push sticks are working well too. Yes, it takes a while to dial it in, and I tell you what, there's no way I could have done this with my rip cut. I'm really starting to understand why people love their table saws. So if this is gonna be the top and that's the bit that's gonna be against the wall, then I want the top piece to look like that, which means my wall piece can look like that. So all the weight's gonna be bearing down on that saddle joint like so. This is how the brace is gonna sit, obviously, down lower in there. So as long as I cut the mortise there, it'll sit perfect. I don't even have to worry about a second cut. Again, we can just trim it down. And the depth is the depth of the outside pieces. So once you start doing it, it'll make a bit more sense. Mine, obviously, I had these little bits in there from the wine rack, they're all gonna go anyway. And this piece in the middle will end up being the tenon. Let's see if that works. New South Wales has been smashed by bushfires for nearly a month now and last couple of weeks Sydney has been copping it. We've been absolutely covered in a blanket of smoke and this isn't even the worst day, but I thought I'd share a little bit of that with you. Back to the project table and I needed a mitre gauge in order to cut all of my 45s. So I knocked up the world's crappiest five minute version to get me through those slices and dices. Here I am extending the mark just behind the blade so that I could line up my shoulder cuts. So this is going to be the depth set to the shoulder of the tenon and the first of two cuts being made in order to allow me to cut off the excess waste and hopefully have tenons which are going to fit back together once I reassemble the pieces. This actually worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. Right, now as we said, this isn't an end table for the queen. It can afford to be a little bit dodgy. The second cut here on the rip, and I realize my technique is really crappy, but I will improve in the future. It did work. There's a bit of an overcut into the gap. I'm really not terribly worried about it. The important thing is I was able to figure out how to get these lovely 45 degree tenons cut using the saw right at the capacity of my depth. So some of these pieces you'll notice didn't even come off. I just had to break off the last couple of millimeters to snap them clean. And here is why I never played basketball at high school. Stupid off cuts. Quick clean up with a file and a chisel just to make the tenons slide better. And it was time for the really cheaty part. So these are the bits where the mortises will be formed. Instead of clearing out the mortise, again, operating right at the height limit of the table saw, I'm able to simply cut the center pieces at a 45 degree angle and then pull them apart. You'll see during assembly how this is gonna make life easy. Look at that, 45s straight through the guts. Assembly time, and I thought I'd do the back pieces before I started chopping up the others, just so I don't get confused. There's gonna be a lot of bits floating around by the end of this. 
So the brace, of course, is the spacer that I need to measure this all up, allowing for the saddle joint at the top as well. Glue and screw all the pieces in. If the spacing isn't perfect, it really doesn't matter here. These are just going to go roughly together. And there's enough wood here that small gaps aren't going to matter, even if they can be seen, the strength should still remain. That's the whole point of doing it this way. Of course, you could make timber racks 10 times bloody easier than what I'm trying to do here. But with most of my videos, I'm not only trying to make something that's going to be functional and very, very strong, I'm also trying to teach myself new techniques. And that usually involves not doing things this easy way, but as I like to, overcomplicating them, and you'll learn from your mistakes as you go along. So far, so good though. These were coming together quite nicely. And there are my completed bits for the wall mounts. Gluing and screwing, wash and repeat, four times. Right, now to get the last cut angle, if I position this in here where it wants to be and mark off there. Now if I take a 45 degree roughly that way, flip it around and it'll be the perfect fit for the other mortise and tenon on the top brace. Okay, there are the last pieces cut, and this is how it'll all come together. That piece sits down there like that. A short piece, good fit. Goes in there like that. This piece will end up sitting there, and that will sit like that. Kept that profile really small, that allowed me to get more wood underneath it. I'll trim these down right at the very end. That should be enough strength to keep them upright. Otherwise, I can trim it down a little bit shorter. Assembly for the bit that's actually going to hold the wood, the top rail, is pretty much identical to before, so we can skip through this nice and fast. Now, in hindsight, one thing I could have done to improve, these bits aren't identical, yet I treated them as being interchangeable. I should have been really more careful to make sure that the brackets and the braces were paired up because I used the same brace for all of the measurements, but the braces weren't exactly the same. So I ended up with small differences towards the end. Back to the crosscut sled quickly and just taking off all of the excess bits that have been created by the voids of the mortises. Mounting time. If you've seen this channel before, you've seen me do a lot of hammer drilling into bricks. What I've chosen to do today, the top hole you'll see there is just a really long screw and I'm using some ram set plugs. Down the bottom, I happen to have four Dynabolts lying around and I think they're rated up to 100 kgs. By drilling a hole through the 45 degree brace that gave me clearance for a screwdriver, I would be able to get in there, screw it into the wall. That was quite neat. Quickly cutting away the majority of the waste off the brackets. And we're ready to assemble. A few of these mortise and tenon joints were a little bit tight and required some sanding and quite a fair bit of persuasion to go together. Look, I do actually have a glue brush. It's not a Rockler, it's from the dollar shop and cost me just about that. But when I've got a lot of gluing to do, it does come in fairly handy. Yeah, quite, quite a bit of persuading. But we got there in the end. Now, obviously one of the weakest parts of this whole design is the saddle at the top. For the moment, I'm just putting a dirty great big screw through the saddle in order to give it some extra strength. Using my jigsaw planer to flatten things out nicely. Bit of buff and shine with 80 grit. And these things are ready for the wall. But first, a strength test, or how to break your ankle on a woodworking project and have everyone laugh at you. Take that. Not an entirely relevant step, but whenever I make pretty, pretty sparks, I do like to film it because they're pretty. They're the old Dynavolts that I had in the wall that had to go. So I could start these with the impact driver, put them through, line them up, trying to avoid the mortar on the wall, Tap, 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 mark the hole, and then drill away. If you wanted to get even ridiculously stronger, you could of course put two Dynabolts in these things. 
But as we said, I'm pretty sure the Dyna bolts are rated to about 100 kgs, so that's more wood than I'm possibly going to be able to fit on top of that. That ain't budging. Win. So kids, after just screwing in all four of these by hand, look what I just figured out. I can use the extension rod for the long drill bit, and it reaches all the way in. That would have saved a lot of time. Doofus. I quickly chopped up these little chock blocks in order to give the bottom one a particularly strong joint. There is absolutely no way that saddle can rise up now, meaning that the bottom one is going to hold the heavier wood, and the top one, where the saddle's only really supported by glue and a screw, will hold the lighter wood. Testing time. Now I'm grabbing those right over the mortise and tenon joint because that's the strongest part. Obviously, if I grabbed it out towards the end, the leverage would be significantly greater. However, I'm going to be careful and stack all of the wood that's heavy towards the back wall. And I currently clock in at about 80 kgs. Overall, I was still pretty bloody impressed with just how much weight they took. There was not a hint of budge when I hung my full weight off that lower bracket. I couldn't believe just how much wood I was able to get off the floor, out of the corners, off my bench and up out of the way. If you like what you see, do subscribe so you can hang around with me more often. Also, you can catch me on Instagram and Facebook if you'd like to see what's happening between projects. Till next time, see you then.